Ah, Harold. What seems to be the problem? Sir, were you aware that the phone lines are dead? Of course. Did you want me to send for someone to fix it? How would someone come out to fix them, though? The bridge is still broken. I thought you said someone was working on it. Well, Harold, I lied. Sir? That's right. I wanted to give the others hope. I think we'll have to repair it ourselves, same with the phone lines. Is Ms. Grigorovich's car still unrepaired as well? That is correct. Why aren't you telling the guests the truth? I'm sure they could help. Harold, there are guests. They're here to enjoy themselves. We'll worry about solving all the problems ourselves. But what about the murderer? Surely you don't believe that Mr. Armstrong would be the only one murdered? Sadly, I don't. You must have some idea as to who the murderer is, don't you? I have no idea. You're lying. Excuse me? Sir, I have been with you for four years without many breaks. I know when you're lying. It's best that you don't know. Don't worry, everyone will be safe. The murderer just wanted vengeance for something Mr. Armstrong did. I provided them that, and that's that. You let this happen! Who did this? How do you know they won't do it again? How could you let this happen? Harold, please settle down. This won't get out of hand, I promise. As long as I'm still around, everything will be okay. How can you be certain? Just trust me on this, okay? At least tell me who did it. I'm sworn to secrecy. <sighs> well, as long as you know what you're doing. Harold, trust me. Elmers gives Hildington a quick smile and then walks out of the room. When he does, Rosie is waiting for him. She's wearing her magenta dress from the night of the ball. Rosie. Rosie begins to kiss Elmers. They kiss for a good minute until Rosie suddenly stops. Rosie looks up at Elmers with fear in her eyes. What's wrong, Rose? Rosie? Rosie looks down at her torso. Elmers looks down with her. To his surprise, he finds a knife sticking out of her with blood flowing out. Rosie falls in his arms and then disappears. <laughs> Tears stream down Elmer's face. In his bed, he wakes up suddenly. <laughs> right outside Uva's room, the door opens and out comes Uva herself in her nightgown. She yawns and stretches for a second. Once she's done, she walks to the bathroom on the left, half asleep. She opens the door and turns on the light. Suddenly, she's fully awake. She is shocked to see Rosie hanging in the room. She quickly throws her hand over her mouth to prevent herself from throwing up. She looks away and regains her control of her stomach. She realizes what she needs to do and makes a run for downstairs. She runs by a clock, but doesn't bother to notice the time. Hour hand points sharply at the four while the minute hand wavers around the seven. Uva runs straight towards Hildington's study. Inside, Holloway hears the incoming footsteps and pulls out Hildington's pistol from his pocket. He takes aim at the door, waiting for whoever's about to enter. The door bursts open and Uva runs in with a concerned look on her face. Uva? Nate, something's happened! Don't tell me. I found another body! Shit! This is all my fault. How exactly is this your fault? I shouldn't have waited in here all night. You know what happened? No one came. No one. It was a foolish and rash decision to try to get the murderer to reveal themselves. Instead of revealing themselves, another person died. Holloway puts his empty hand to his forehead and looks down to the ground. Uva walks over to Holloway and puts her hand on his shoulder. Nate, this isn't your fault. None of us were looking out last night. This is all of our faults. Who died? The maid. Damn it. Harold's gonna be heartbroken. Where's the body? In the bathroom. Holloway pockets the pistol and hurriedly exits the study. Uva follows close behind him. Together, they make their way up to the bathroom. All of the doors are still closed. No one else is awake. They finally reach the bathroom and Holloway takes a long look at the scene. Rosie hangs there with a frightened look on her lifeless face. The rope is turning back and forth slightly. Rosie's feet almost touch the ground and her arms hang at her side and stay still. The light in her eyes have been extinguished. Holloway continues to examine the scene with sorrow in his eyes. Uva stays where she is, still staring at the body. I see no sign of any wounds. This is definitely how she was killed. The scene's been cleaned carefully. I doubt we'll find any evidence, but I'll still look. Holloway checks every inch of the bathroom, desperately hoping the killer left something. Nothing is found. Not even a single strand of hair. What about the others? Let's move the body into a room. We should let everyone enjoy as much sleep as possible. Probably doesn't come often right now. 
Uva moves closer to the body, with a disgusted look on her face. Holloway stands on the edge of the bathtub and carefully unties the noose. The body nearly falls, but Holloway catches it. Grab the feet. Uva hesitates but realizes that Holloway's losing his grip and grabs them. She looks as though she's about to be sick, but she manages to hold it together. Holloway carefully steps off the bathtub with Rosie's head in one hand and her upper back in the other. Together, they walk out of the bathroom and bring the body to Rosie's room. Luckily, the door is partially open and Uva kicks it open. They walk in and carefully set the body down on the white sheeted bed. Rosie's head rests on the pillow. Holloway goes up to her and closes her brown eyes. It looks like she's sleeping. Yes, she looks at peace. Holloway and Uva walk out of the room and close the door behind them. They begin to walk downstairs when they hear a door open. They both turn around to see Elmer standing outside Holloway's room. Rosie's door is opened again and Elmer walks in. Holloway and Uva can be seen behind him. Elmer stops walking when he sees Rosie lying on the bed. A glimpse of hope shows on his face, hoping that Rosie was just asleep. He notices the marks on her neck. He slowly walks up to the bed while Holloway and Uva stay out of the room, watching in silence. Elmer reaches the bed and touches Rosie's cold hand. Tears begin to flow down his face. Rosie? Rosie? Please, don't leave me. We could have had a future. Please, come back. Rosie, come back! Please, I... I need you. Elmer lays his head on her stomach and begins to sob. Holloway backs out of the doorway and closes the door behind him. He wipes a tear away from his eye. Holloway and Uva turn around when they hear a door open. Out comes Alexa. She yawns and then looks at Uva and then to Holloway. She notices their grim expressions and she begins to worry. No. Rosie. She's not. I'm afraid so. Tears start streaming down Alexa's face and Holloway steps forward to offer her up a shoulder to cry on. Alexa willingly accepts it and she stands there for a bit until she pulls herself together. Is Harold in her room? Yes. I'd better be there with him. I'm sure he needs it. Holloway nods and walks to his room. Alexa opens the door to Rosie's room and closes it behind her. Uva slumps down to the floor and holds her head in her hands. Holloway opens his door and expects to see Waltz, but he's not there. Eric? Holloway pops his head out of his room. Uva, was Eric awake when you came to get me? I don't think he was. Why? Shit. We need to find him. Is he in danger? It could be a lot worse than danger. Uva gets up and they both walk hurriedly to the stairs. Inside Rosie's room, Elmer's and Alexa are sitting across from each other in the two wooden chairs. In front of them is a matching, square table. The table doesn't have much on it, only a lamp, which is now the only light source on in the room. I just can't believe it. She was the best thing that ever happened to me. I can't imagine what it feels like. Just trying to imagine my life without Juliet. It's just too horrible. I'm really sorry, Harold. She was a great friend to all of us, and she'll be missed. I remember the first time we met. She smiled at me and welcomed me in with open arms. I'd met Mr. Hildington weeks before, but I still hadn't met any other staff. She gave me a tour of the entire mansion and introduced me to all of you. You were all so great. Especially after what happened with my last employer. But Rosie was my guide. She's the whole reason why Juliet and I met. Yes. She was amazing. You know, I think I was out of town that weekend as you and Juliet got together. I could definitely use a happy story right now, if you'd be willing to. Sure, but I thought for sure Juliet would have told you by now. Surprisingly, she hasn't yet. Well, it was probably one of the happiest days of my life. I'd broken up with my old girlfriend, Michelle, about two weeks before. I was really down in the dumps because it was a nasty breakup. I wasn't really doing the best that I could with gardening and Mr. Hildington asked me if something was wrong. I was a little embarrassed but I told him about my breakup. He told me that I just needed some time. Mr. Hildington wasn't the only person to notice. Rosie came up to me and asked me the same thing. She then went on to tell me that Juliet was single and, well to put it bluntly, gay. 
I told her I wasn't sure. I did think that Juliet was beautiful, but I knew little to nothing about her. After our talk, and when Juliet and I were both not working, Rosie basically locked us in the room together. <laughs> that sounds exactly like her. Yes, it definitely does. Well, Julie and I talked for a while, but I was too shy to ask her out. A couple of nights later, I got a note from Mr. Hildington saying that he needed me in the dining room at 6 and I was to dress nicely. I was a little confused, but I did as I was told. When I walked into the room, there Juliet was in this beautiful blue dress. I stood there and stared at her for a good second until she said, You're not looking half bad yourself. Which made me laugh. I sat down and we talked for a little bit until Rosie came out with two plates of food. She explained everything to us and the rest is history. Juliet wanted to tell everyone right away. She wanted to scream it to the world. She told me that night when we became a thing that she'd never been in love before. I convinced her to keep it a secret because I still wasn't very comfortable about it. Thankfully, I've been getting over that. Anyways, Rosie was the reason why I found my soulmate and had one of the best nights of my life. She was such an amazing person. She really was. Listen, Harold, I hate to bring this up, but I know it's important. Juliet and I knew that Mr. Huldington and Rosie were helping you through the abuse of Jean. I'd just like you to know that Julie and I are here for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just feel like I'll never find love again. Rosie was such an amazing person, and I felt something special for her for a long time. Just when I finally confessed my true feelings for her, she got ripped out of my life. You just need time, Harold. I'm sure one day you'll find a nice girl and settle down. It's what Rosie would have wanted. I just can't believe all of this has happened in such a short time. Where did the good times go? The times when Jacques was still here, cracking his inappropriate jokes. The times when Mr. Hildington would invite such amazing guests over for dinner. The times when Rosie... It'll be okay, Harold. We'll be okay. Could you give me some time alone, please? Of course. Alexa stands up and begins to walk towards the door. Alexa. Thank you. For everything. Alexa smiles and then leaves the room. She softly closes the door behind her and walks to Elizabeth's room. Uva and Holloway look desperately around the house, in search of Waltz. Holloway is currently in the kitchen, while Uva is in the dining room. Eric! Where are you? Nate, where was the last place you saw him? Let's see, he went outside to go. To go do what? Holloway starts nearly running to the door leaning out to the pool, and Uva follows right behind him, trying to keep up with him. Nate! To do what? Holloway reaches the door and opens it and looks in the pool. Waltz's dead body floats at the top of the pool. Oh my god, oh my god, this is really happening, isn't it? This is happening. No, it has to be a dream. Nathan, wake me up, wake me up! Uva grabs hold of Holloway for a second and shakes him. Then she stoops down to the ground, holding her head. Please, I can't do this anymore. I just can't handle it. Wake up! Uva begins to bawl uncontrollably. <laughs> Holloway sits down beside her and holds her in his arms, attempting to calm her. He strokes her hair. Uva. Uva. Settle down. Look, as long as I'm here, I'll make sure no one dies. That's what you said last time! And look at him! Uva, please pull yourself together. Now look, if you show the murderer that they're getting to you, they'll have already won. Be strong, Uva. But what if they get you? What if I'm next? Uva, snap out of it! Uva stops hyperventilating and just stares at Holloway for a second. She suddenly kisses him on the lips and Holloway's eyes widen in shock. Uva stops and realizes what she's done. Nate, I I'm sorry, I just... Uva gets up and runs inside, and Holloway tries to call after her. Uva, wait! Damn it. Upstairs in Elizabeth's room, Elizabeth is brushing her hair as she hears a knock on the door. She sets her brush down and walks over to the door and opens it slightly. She puts her eye up to the crack to see who's there. It's Alexa. 
Alexa has changed out of her pajamas and is in her work clothes. Elizabeth opens the door fully. Good morning, Elizabeth. Did you have a good night's rest? I most certainly did. Thanks for asking. How was it spending the night with Uva? Not as bad as I thought it would be. Did you hear what happened? Don't tell me someone else has died. I'm afraid so. Rosie's body was found. My god, that's horrible. Alexa, I'm so sorry for your loss. She was a good friend of yours, right? Yes, she was. I suppose that you're here for Juliet? Yes, ma'am. Is she still asleep? She's sleeping like a baby. I'll get out of your way. I'm going to rustle up some breakfast. I'll let you know when it's ready. That's very kind of you. Thanks. No trouble at all. I figured someone's got to do it. Elizabeth walks out of the room and then walks Alexa. She stands over Elizabeth's bed and looks at the sleeping Juliet. Juliet? Julie? Yo, Jules! Juliet doesn't respond. Alexa decides the only way she's getting her up is to jump into the bed. She jumps and lands right next to Juliet. Juliet suddenly <laughs> wakes up and jumps in surprise. She turns over to see Alexa lying right next to her with her head propped up on one hand, and the other hand is on her hip. Jesus Christ, Lexi! You nearly gave me a heart attack! Well, I had to wake you up somehow. You were completely unconscious. You didn't even respond to Jules! I'm guessing you had a good night's rest? Ugh, you sure did. I haven't been that tired in my life. You must be getting old. If your definition of old is 26, then what does that make Uva? Ancient. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're the same age, that makes you old too. Then we'll be old together. Juliet tickles Alexa, <laughs> but when she stops, Alexa suddenly grows grim. What is it? Rosie's body was found this morning. She was hung. Holy shit. Y you can't be serious. Uva found her this morning. Oh my god. Oh my god. Juliet puts a hand over her mouth and tears start coming out of her eyes. Alexa moves beside her and hugs her. Downstairs, Holloway comes in from the pool and sniffs the air. He smiles at the smell of a delicious breakfast being made. He then goes up to the second floor of the manor and walks to Rosie's room. He knocks on the door, expecting Elmer's to still be there. Nathan. Harold, I need your help with something. Do you have a minute? What's wrong? It's Eric. He's... Another victim? I'm afraid so. This has got to stop! This murderer has killed too many friends! Too many loved ones! Mr. Hildington knew something, I just know it! Every time I talked to the man, I felt like I knew less and less about this case. Harold, I want you to personally search his office. You knew him the longest, maybe you can find something I didn't already find. Is that what you needed help with? There's something else. We need to get Eric's body out of the pool and up to his room. I think two sets of hands would accomplish this better than one. Of course. Elmers and Holloway walk out of Rosie's room and Holloway shuts the door behind him. They walk downstairs just as Elizabeth begins her ascent. Good morning, Nathan. Harold? Good morning. Morning, Mom. Harold, I'm really sorry to hear about Rosie. This must be really hard for you. First Bernard, then the cook, and now her. These are tough times, but I've been trying to make it through. I'm not letting the murderer get away with this. Amen. Oh, breakfast's ready, if you guys are hungry. I think we'll wait until after we take care of the body. The food smells lovely, though. Did you cook it? Yes. I learned from my mother, but I'm definitely not as good as she was. Did you say body? I thought Rosie's body was already taken care of. It was. But another person has been killed. Really? Who? Eric. Damn. I really liked that man. He was so full of life. Yes. He was a great man. Anyways, we better get going. See you at breakfast. Holloway and Elmers continue going downstairs and Elizabeth watches them for a second. She then heads straight to her bedroom. She knocks on the door. Juliet and Alexa are still lying in bed. Juliet and Alexa's arms. Come in. Breakfast is ready. We'll be down in a moment. All right. I'll meet you two down there. Elizabeth closes the door. She begins making her way to the stairs when she notices Uva sitting in the corner next to the left bathroom. Her face is tear-stained, her hair is messed up, and she's balled up. Uva stares at Elizabeth as she draws closer. Uva, what's wrong? You look terrible. 
what's wrong? What's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong, Elizabeth. There's a murderer walking around with us and they're still killing people. That's what's fucking wrong. Uva, everything will be all right, I promise. Nathan will solve this. I just know it. He's a smart man. How can you be so damn calm knowing that there's a murderer in the same mansion as you? Uva, I'm nervous as hell. I barely got any sleep last night. I just hide my fear. If we let the murderer see that we're scared out of our wits, they'll have already won. Holloway's told you this before. What would I do without you? Panic until you'd start tearing down the whole mansion. <laughs> Probably. Are you hungry? I made some breakfast this morning. <sighs> Not really. I'm sure it's great though. I think I might just get some fresh air. Well, alright. Feel free to join us if you want to. Thanks. You know, Elizabeth, you're a lucky girl. Why is that? Well, you love your husband, right? Jason? Of course I do. We've been married for 13 years now. <sighs> I wish I was like you. Happy. In love. You'll find love one day, Uva. Just keep on looking. I'm 40 years old, Elizabeth. There's no hope for me. When you're not all paranoid and homophobic, you're a nice person. Any man would be lucky to have you. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm glad to have a friend like you. Elizabeth smiles and walks downstairs. Uva gets up, stretches, and does the same. The door to the dining room is open and in walks Holloway with Elmer's right behind him. Everyone looks up from their food when they walk in. Elizabeth sits alone on the left side and across from her sits Juliet and Alexa. Holloway walks over and sits next to Elizabeth while Elmer sits next to Alexa. They both look at all the food in the center and smile. Fresh fruit has been chopped up for a fruit salad. Pancakes are stacked high on a plate, and warm breakfast sausage is on the plate directly next to it. Cups of orange juice have been pre-poured for everyone. There's even one for where Uva would be sitting. Wow, you are an excellent cook. I just did what I could with what was left. These pancakes are amazing. What the hell? I don't understand. We're all here. Who could have fired the gun? Not everyone's here. Uva's- Shit. Everyone stands up and rushes out of the room in search of answers. When they reach the second floor, they look through each room desperately in search of the source of the shot. Alexa finds a smoking gun lying on the table in Armstrong's room. In here! Everyone rushes into Armstrong's room and Holloway pushes up to the front and inspects the gun. Some sort of time mechanism has been made in order for the trigger to be pulled at an exact time. I don't understand. Nathan. Is that... is that your gun? No, it's not Hildington's either. I have that one with me. I don't get it, I looked through every room. There wasn't a trace of another gun. Where did this come from? Apparently you didn't search well enough. But why would the murderer need a distraction? Perhaps to catch us off guard. Wait. What if the murderer was hoping that someone would stay behind? The only person not here is Uva. They all stop talking and look at each other. Then they run out of the room and go run to the door leading to the garden downstairs. They burst out into the open and startle Uva, who was sitting on the bench. Uva gets up and looks at all of them with a surprised look. What is it? You're the murderer. Excuse me? You're the murderer! Harold, settle down. We don't know if this is true. You've been holding back this whole time. You just won't accept that fact that Uva's the one who's done it. It's been so obvious this whole time, yet you won't accept it. Rosie died because of your pig-headedness! If we lock up the wrong person, the killer will still be free to roam. It's very important that we get this right the first time. How many people will die before you find out who's done it? Harold, please! I sat silently for too long. Rosie died because of it! Elmer starts crying and he puts his hand over his eyes. Everyone stands there for a moment, silent and solemn. Elmer's removes his hand from his face and then runs inside the manor. Silence falls over the group once again as they remember all that's happened thus far. Well, I say we all just go back inside and finish up breakfast. Right after that, I need to interrogate all of you, starting with you, Juliet. Sounds good to me. Everyone but Uva walks back inside. Uva stands there, looking off in the distance. Everyone's just finished eating breakfast and is trying their best to relax in the sitting room. Right outside, Holloway walks up to Elmer's. Look, Harold, I know this is all my fault. 
and I'm to blame for Rosie's death. I should have figured this out long ago. All of the murders are on my hands. I don't care if you hate me, I just need your help. What are you talking about? This isn't your fault, it's the murderer's. I was out of line out there, and I'd like to apologize for it. Save it. So, what did you need help with? Harold, now's your chance to look through Hildington's study. I want you to take Alexa with you while I interrogate Juliet. I don't want anyone to be alone, just in case. Of course. We'll search every nook and cranny of his study. Good man. Harold, I promise that I'll catch this son of a bitch, and I'll do it for Rosie. Don't just do it for her. Do it for all of them. Elmers and Holloway walk back into the sitting room. Juliet, go ahead and head up to my room. I'll be there in a minute. Alexa, would you mind helping me search through Mr. Hildington's study? Sure, but what are they looking for? I'll tell you on the way. While I'm questioning Juliet, I suggest keeping Uva company. Sounds good to me. She'll probably need it. Elizabeth gets up and begins to walk out, but Holloway stops her. Holloway finally pieces it all together. It's you. Pardon? You're the murderer. You bitch. You saw the knife from the kitchen. You're the one Elmer spotted that night. You wore Uva's perfume to fool anyone who saw. <laughs> Very good, Nathan. Too bad it's too late. What is... Holloway starts to feel sick. His hand shoots up to his temple as he suddenly develops a searing headache. Elizabeth smiles at Holloway and winks. Goodbye, detective. Elizabeth walks out of the room and makes her way to the garden. Holloway tries to ignore the pain he's feeling as he tries to run after Elizabeth, but he gets turned around. His vision starts to get blurry and he's unaware that he's near the stairs. He falls down on the ground, unable to move. He tries to keep his eyes open, but he's finding it to become harder and harder. Outside in the garden, Uva is admiring the variety of flowers all around, neatly kept. She doesn't hear Elizabeth open the door. Elizabeth stays distant for a moment and walks off as though something caught her eye. Uva bends over and smells one of the flowers. She takes a deep breath in. A little fresh air is exactly what the doctor ordered. She turns around and nearly jumps when she sees Elizabeth standing close by her with her hands behind her back. Jesus, Elizabeth! Don't do that! Sorry, you just look so peaceful. I didn't want to disturb you. It's quite lovely out here. Uva turns her back to Elizabeth to look around some more. It certainly is. I've got to give that girl credit. She definitely knows how to garden. Yes, she certainly does. Uva turns around to find that Elizabeth is closer than before. Is there something you wanted? No, just wanted some fresh air. Same as you. You know, I was reminded of how this all began. How's that? Well, when I gave you a ride to the manor, I wasn't sure how I felt about you. Then, I started to get to know you better, and I really felt a connection. I knew this had to be special. What are you getting at? I remember you once saying, I'd lose my head if it weren't attached. What do you have behind your back? Your fate. Elizabeth suddenly takes her hands behind her back and it's revealed that she has a large set of clippers in her hand. Uva tries to run, but Elizabeth trips her. She tries to yell out for help, but Elizabeth stops her. She stabs the clippers into Uva's throat, and Uva tries to prevent herself from bleeding out. Elizabeth stabs her again and again. Tears start to rise in Uva's eyes, but the light fades from them. The last tears to ever come out of her eyes fall down. Elizabeth puts the clippers around Uva's neck and keeps on slicing, using all of her might. Uva's head falls away from the rest of her body, and the clippers are left on the ground. Elizabeth removes her bloodstained jacket and pulls Holloway's gun out from the pocket. She looks back at her handiwork and smiles evilly. After a brief moment, she makes her way to the door, ready to take her next victim. While Alexa and Elmers were chatting inside the study, Elizabeth makes her way to the stairs. She finds Holloway lying down on the ground, limp. Oh, Holloway, if only you were invited. I bet that damned Hildington invited you out of hope that you find out the truth. What a coward. Well, anyways, it's too late now. I've won. Inside the study, Elmers and Alexa are desperately searching for a clue Hildington might have left. While Alexa looks through Hildington's desk, Elmers looks through the books lining the wall. 
So far, neither of them have been successful, but they are determined. You know, I still think it's Ufa. She's mad as a hatter. I'm willing to bet that she has the capability to commit murder. Well, we'll find it if... Alexa looks up from the desk at Elmer's. Elmer's is standing by the bookshelf with a book in his hands. What is it? Inside Holloway's room, Juliet sits waiting for Holloway. She looks down at her watch and wonders where Holloway is. She starts thinking about last night and how tired she was. She thinks harder and realizes that she wasn't tired until she drank a glass of water. Robinson Crusoe was Mr. Hiltington's favorite. Wait, do you think- Only one way to find out. To whom it may concern, I hope this is found before any of my staff are dead. When I die, this should all be over. All of my staff, all of my family should still be alive. If something goes wrong and the deal isn't met... What? Elizabeth Harding is the murderer. Holy shit! I, I can't believe it! She, she seems so normal! We've got to stop her before she gets anyone else! Elmers drops the note and both of them quickly run out of the room and carefully look around. Back in Holloway's room, Juliet realizes what happened. Oh my god, it's- Suddenly the door opens and a figure walks out of the shadows. Elizabeth appears in the doorway. Hello, Juliet. Why don't you come with me? We're going for a little trip. Elizabeth takes Holloway's revolver out from behind her and points it at Juliet. Out in the main room, Elmers and Alexa find the body of Holloway, lying limp on the cold, hard ground. They quickly rush over to take a better look. Nathan? Nathan? No. No, this can't, this can't be happening, Nathan. Please, don't be dead! Alexa tries to shake Holloway awake, but nothing happens. Alexa crumples down to the ground and a few tears start coming out of her eyes. Elmers taps Alexa on her shoulder and she looks up at Elmers. Elmers is pointing to the stairs and Alexa looks. She's surprised to find Elizabeth coming down the stairs, but she isn't alone. Elizabeth is holding Juliet in front of her with one arm and Holloway's gun is pointed at Juliet's head in the other hand. Stay where you are or she'll get it. Please, I beg you, don't do this! <laughs> don't worry, dear. It'll be over before you know it. Why the hell are you doing this? You don't know any of us! We haven't done anything to you! Oh, I know, but the opportunity was perfect. We were all just simply at the wrong place at the wrong time. You see, the mystery genre has been dying and is being polluted by all those damn Doyle and Christie impersonators. I wanted to bring life back to the genre, but I was out of inspiration. My books were barely selling anymore because everyone's now into romance. My life work was falling apart, and I knew I needed to do something big. So I did. I blackmailed Hildington in order to set this all up. He wasn't part of the plan, though. Elizabeth points to Holloway. Elizabeth smiles. Every good murder mystery needs a detective, though. You evil bitch! You'll never get away with this! Oh, believe me, I know this. Who wouldn't want to read about the now-famous murders that took place in Hildington Manor? Especially when the book written about it is from the murderer herself. I'll be famous. You're a twisted bastard. No, I'm an artist. You know, this is the first time I've ever killed anyone. It's really quite fun. My first murder was really standard, so I knew I had to bump it up. The deal was to kill Hildington last, but I knew that he'd expose me if I killed one of you. Killing you guys was just too irresistible. It's a shame about you and Rosie finally hitting it off right before she was murdered. You'll see each other soon, though. Well, I think I've done enough explaining. Now, it's time to say goodbye, Juliet. No! Please, stop this! You don't have to do this! I'll do anything, just don't hurt her! Take me instead! Alexa, it'll be okay. Tears start sliding down Alexa's face again, and a tear builds up in Juliet's eye. Alexa tries to make a run at Elizabeth, but Elmer stops her. Elizabeth cocks the pistol in her hand. 